Thank you for joining iMeet. When you hear the tone, you will be the 21st person to join the meeting. This meeting is now being recorded. Check. Hey everybody, good afternoon. This is uh, David Blake with Tuesday Tech Talk. And um, today we're going to quickly review the last week in the market and take a look at what's going on uh, going forward here over the next couple of days, what's been strong, what's weak, and see where we might be able to make some money. Uh, this is your first time on here. I usually talk about 20 or 25 minutes, and then we kind of open it up to uh, questions. Um, you can ask anything about individual stocks, sectors, uh, price targets, whatever you feel like, industries, anything you want. And then um, hopefully we can try to make you some money on this thing. And I want to apologize today um, before we start. I, I, I ended up with the flu over the last couple of days, so I didn't have really t time to work on something. Um, but as I was putting something together today, I actually kind of stumbled across something that I think you'll, you'll really benefit from. And that is um, we, we've been pretty lucky over the last few weeks, if you've been attending these, we've got you in the right sectors. We've had some, some big gains in a lot of the stocks we've been talking about. And, um, you know, a lot of times you, you'll hear an analyst upgrade or downgrade a stock, usually on the upgrades, and then you don't hear anything else about it. They've upgraded 20 and maybe it goes to 30, 35, now it's back at 25. Uh, and you're wondering what the hell to do. And um, what I think we're going to do today is, is, is talk a little bit about, uh, you know, okay, we, we've bought some stocks, we're in the right sectors, we're in the right industries, we're, we're making money on these things, the market's going up, uh, where do I think about selling and what do I do? So I hope you'll get something out of that. I think it's some, some stuff that, um, again, should help you to make some money. Okay, what we're going to do first, uh, like we always do, we'll quickly review the, the market. Um, just before we even start, uh, you know, the Dow Jones was up for a fourth week in a row, six of the last seven weeks. Uh, the Dow gained about 368 points last week, 1.6%. One, 1. Uh, we're still in that upward channel, but as you can see up here, we're stalling out a little bit. Uh, you know, we're at the top of this, this channel, and by, by any measure you want to look at, the market was, it was overbought as of last Thursday. Uh, we have the S&P short-term oscillator, which uh, you, you get for free, actually, if you're a subscriber and you go to the beta site, hit 5% last week uh, at, at Thursday's close. They consider, uh, you know, you hear Jim Cramer talk about, about this thing a lot, and uh, any time over 4%, you got to consider the market being overbought. 5% uh, was the highest I've seen it in, in quite a while. I guess that would have been right about here. And this thing here, when you bump against this channel, what usually happens is you see over here and probably over here, you get a little bit of a sideways to pull back a little bit. So, um, you know, look at this is overbought. Here's the 14-day RSI, extremely overbought. Um, you hear me talk a lot about 30-day stochastic. I like it to be over 80. When it gets over 80, you'll start to, you'll usually see a nice long trend going in. Uh, we, we hit over this, we hit over 80. But when it gets to about 95 and over, uh, that's time for a little bit of a pullback. Even with yesterday, we're still around 96 or something like that. So, uh, again, by any means, we're over body, even stochastic, or even on the uh, MACD. But here you'll see this. We're bumping up against that upward channel. I would expect to see this pullback. Um, you know, nothing much. Maybe maybe uh, 150 point, 200 point was, or, or something like that. Here's the AD line. Again, you saw this huge breakout up here, which meant that uh, the participation in the and this move is huge, um, and you have a little bit of a hiccup here, nothing to be surprised about. But going back uh, uh, here just real quickly, okay, we, had a, we had a CTI, which uh, as of last Friday uh, moved down to a plus 11. Uh, we're still expected to stay positive on that uh, through October, but again, we're overbought, and I'm looking for some sideways action in here. We'll still be a, a, a positive 11 on this Friday. Momentum went to a... Uh, State of neutral plus three. If you're a new subscriber with the momentum index tracks, so that's a proprietary index. And I'd like to see what what the other indexes are outperforming the Dow, which is a positive. And right now, the uh, Dow Jones is one of the uh, stronger indexes out there. That's why the momentum is only a plus three at this stage right here. Uh, sentiment index is another proprietary index of ours. Uh, went to a minus two, which is negative. That's another red flag. And that's uh, indicating that the investors are getting a little bit too frothy up here. 
um, as, as we can see on some of the uh, different sentiment indexes are starting to get back up uh, overly bullish. So things such as the uh, uh, percentage of bullish uh, investment advisors jump back up to uh, 57.5. We'll, get a, we'll probably be above 60 when that comes out tomorrow, and that's that's kind of in the dangerous uh, territory. So uh, a little bit a little bit of caution on that stuff, but we're not seeing negative divergences at this point, which is good. Uh, the last thing I want to talk about real quickly is um, – Okay, well, here's the AD line. We'll go on to that, uh, which shows the, how broad based this rally is right now. Here's the 52-week uh, uh, new highs, new lows on the uh, NYSE. <laughs> and uh, you'll get a little bit of contraction here on Thursday and Friday, no big deal. Uh, we broke out over 300, which was one of the highest uh, uh, numbers of, of the year earlier in the week. I guess that's probably Wednesday or Thursday. Here's the uh, S&P 500. And what you can see over here is this the same upward channel. The S&P got a little bit ahead of itself over here. What, what this is called is called a throwover to technicians. And a throwover is you have your channel going up like this, and you get overextended, and you're going to you're going to uh, you know re reserve back into the uh, uh, back into this channel at some point. So I'll probably look at this thing to come back here around 25, uh, you know maybe 25.40 area, something like that. It can bump bump and go sideways. To that, or as the channel goes up, it'll uh, you know go, end up being back in the channel. So as you'll see over here, the 14-day we're overbought. We had the 30-day was up here around 95, 96 again. Good accumulation. Uh, Stochastics uh, still confirming that the trend is up. And here's the Nasdaq. Nasdaq actually has a little bit of a seems to me that like it can still move a little bit higher. Still overbought. Uh, here's the 14-day. We're only at 70 right now. The channel here, this is a throw over here, and it, and it uh, you know, um, verted back to the mean, came back into the channel. We had another throw over there. We got ahead of ourselves, came back, and then we're back in the channel. So uh, the next time we get like a little bit of a spurt, um, yeah, maybe it, you'll, you'll, as we'll talk about later, you might want to just pull off a little bit of cash and wait for it to come maybe back down into the channel. But uh, I don't see any negative divergence really on this thing yet either. Here's the uh, advanced decline line. Again, we talked about this huge... Uh, confirmation of the trend uh, still looks fine. A little bit of a hiccup here in the last couple of days. No big deal. Today we're almost uh, not quite two to one. We're about uh, five to five to three on the advanced declines uh, within New York and Nasdaq today. Again, we had this breakout in here. This 350. That was one of the highest uh, number of new highs we had all year long. That was just um, what I guess about the last week or so. And then we had a little bit of contraction in here, which is fine because we want some consolidation. In this market, you know, the thing, things don't go to the moon, uh, so they got to have a, some sideways action once in a while, and uh, that's pro that's what we're getting a little bit in here, which is which is fine with what we're doing. Okay, here's the Russell 2000. You know, we talked about the small caps were leading the way here. Again, look at here's the 14 day over, over uh, you know overbought on the 14 day RSI. We are getting a little bit of short term uh, MACD starting to roll over a little bit, and here's the 30 day stochastic. We're up here for a long time at. Uh, you know, 96 or so. So, uh, if if this thing would pull, have a for some reason have a serious pullback, I don't see it pulling back any more than uh, than this level over here, which would be right around the pivot level, which would be 1460. I don't even think you're going to see that. I think you'll come back here, maybe the that 1500 and go sideways, 1480, maybe around that area, 1490, go sideways a little bit like that. But uh, overbought, and, and at some point you have to go, uh, you know, consolidate these gains, which is what you're doing. And that's fine. But uh, I think as extended as this thing is, you might have a little bit more of a pullback. Here's the transports. Again, you have a 10 or 11% move in here. You get this thing up around 95, 96, you start to roll over. Overbought, it's, it's working its way off. It's, uh, you know, it was up today. It was up 75 points. Now we're up uh, almost touching 10,000 this morning. I think we came just within a hair of that. Uh, so if we consolidate here and get another push up, we'll probably break out the new highs on that. And um, again, it's, it's, this consolidation is something perfectly normal. But when you see this, uh, that you have to sometimes go, well, you know, I've had a heck of a heck of a run in here. I've got some really nice profits. What do I do? Well, you don't want to sell everything because the, the major trend is still up. But um, we'll, we'll look at some stocks and stuff that we that we've talked about the last couple of weeks that we've got nice profits in. Then maybe you sell part of a position, uh, put in a sell stop or, or sell limit. Uh, to, to take some profits and then wait for the thing to pull back. Okay. 
What I want I had a couple questions came in here, but uh, before I get to them, uh, for the best, this is uh, including through this morning the best performing sectors. You had utilities up 1.85 percent, which was surprising to me. I, last week I think it was flat to down, so this must have, must have had a good day yesterday. I'm sorry, I, I was out, I was in bed yesterday, but uh, trying to get this thing and, and be up to date. Uh, technology is still up 1.3 percent. Consumer discretionary was up good. Um, part of that's probably Amazon. Some of that energy, materials, financials. A lot of the industries that we've talked about over the last few weeks where we wanted to be uh, exposed to some of these areas, and we've been buying some of the stocks in that area. So um, what I want to go to here first, uh, uh, speaking about the airline stocks, uh, the, tra the transports, we had mentioned a couple of airline stocks uh, that looked good. Uh, we had some questions that came in during the week, and we had this 20% pullback in the uh, airlines. This is the uh, dollar sign XAO, which is the airline index. And we had almost a 20% uh, pullback uh, in, in this group. And, and when you had that in a, in a single group, and yet you were having the Dow Jones transports uh, break out to a new high, you wanted to see what was, you know, maybe what was laggy and, and, and to go into that when you saw this thing start to turn around. And we saw that turn around. We got the above 50 over in, over in here. Had a nice pullback, and then we got the big breakout, and we're uh, breaking out today again. In fact, the airlines are the strongest uh, industry group today. They're up almost 3% again. So this thing's breaking out again. We should, once you've reached, uh, you know, when you have a pullback like this and you get a, a, a short term, uh, short time period, you, you retrace again 50% of what you've uh, uh, pulled back on. Generally, that means you're going to retrace the whole level. We've already had that 50% retracement cross back over some of the major uh, uh, indexes. And I, I'll, I expect to see a pretty nice move in airlines going forward. This, and I think you'll probably challenge that old high that we had back here in, uh, in mid-July. So that's something to keep uh, uh, in mind. Now, one of our model portfolios, we, we added uh, Sky West to it uh, on, on Monday, SKYW. It's had a pretty good run in here, but... Uh, yeah, Delta looks good in here, uh, Spirit Airlines, a lot of them. I think because of this pullback, even though they've had a pretty good spike in here, probably uh, if we consolidate a little bit, they're going to work their way higher and probably get to their old highs that uh, we, we saw back in uh, uh, in July. Okay, we had, I got a question came in. They wanted me to take a look at steel and oil. I haven't talked about steel over the last couple of weeks, but we have been talking a lot about oil and energy. So uh, this is a steel uh ETF. You saw you know, a little bit of a pullback in here where we took some profits. Now we, we, we had a little run up in here. We're kind of going sideways. But I, I think with this, you, the problem with this is you're starting to see a little bit of negative divergence on this. Uh, you're not quite making, you're making a little bit higher higher highs or lower highs, but um, you, know, you kind of have a triangle period and you're holding moving averages. I think if we can keep going sideways a little bit and this thing doesn't break too far in here, it doesn't take out these lows. You can probably look at some of the steel stocks. They they are getting um, they're not oversold yet, but uh, you know I, I, there's, there's some of these you can look at. We'll, we'll look at more individual stocks because I didn't get this question until uh, late today. Um, we can look at some more individual ones. One of the reasons I like some of the other other industries better, uh, even though steel is included in the infrastructure build out, I think right now the focus is going to be on the uh, you know the financials and some of the, and the industrials and um, uh, you know, again, energy and some of these that, that are probably going to benefit more from the a tax reform than just the infrastructure. I think the infrastructure build out is going to be secondary. There's a lot of stuff that will be built out, but uh, steel, I think you can buy if it gets oversold over in here and holds this uh, 40 to 41 area. And we'll look at some of these next week. But uh, it's, it's not my favorite group in here because I think it's still consolidating some of this group in here. But here's uh, oil. This is the close of yesterday. Now we've been talking about oil for quite a while. That, um, that I, we went bullish on this several weeks ago, probably about about the first of September, and we had a long list of stocks that I thought you could buy uh, that we talked about here the last couple of weeks. Um, you know, talking about ESV, uh, DO, Diamond Offshore, uh, Halliburton, Schlumberger, SLB, uh, Noble NE, uh, Suncor, SU. Uh, Occidental Petroleum OXY, they've all had pretty good runs. Now, I, I, this, I bought uh, into the DO uh, at a pretty good price. So this morning when the oil was, uh, you know, we spiked up 2%. This is as a close yesterday, so this will be back up up here 
around 51 uh, today is, re is recouping all that. I still think that oil has enough that we're going to break out to possibly go as high as 55. So there's still upside. But when you've had a, when you have a couple of big moves like you get in some of these oil stocks, uh, you can see this accumulation still looks fine on this. Uh, like, like, a, like a day today when you get a, a big jump in there, you, you might put up a, a sell limit or, uh, on some of these stocks. I put a sell limit today on DO at 1570. I didn't get filled on everything. I, I'm surprised I got filled on some, but uh, I did take some profit in that, and I'll look to buy it back um, if, if we get up some consolidation in that. There's a big short position in, in, in a lot of these oil stocks, and uh, at some point you know, they, they may have to cover, although my longer-term projection on oil doesn't really go much higher than 55 at, at this point. I think that um, you know when we get up here, they get this 50, up, when it gets around $52 or so, and you get another uh, uh, jump up in oil, you can uh, you know take take some money off the table. I, I'm still bullish on a longer term, but you're not going to go break broke taking profits. Nothing worse than if buying a stock at say 20 bucks it goes to 30, and you're sitting here at 24 now, and you're wondering, I guess I should have sold it. I wish I had known it was you know and maybe had some guidance. And what I'm trying to do is give you a little bit of guidance that when you get these big moves over a two, two or three week period, you probably need to take a little bit of profits. Now there's you know, there's there's stocks like Facebook or Google or something like that where you maybe you buy it and you're thinking I'm going to hold on to this thing long term and that's great. You, you keep on doing that. But when we talked about the oil trade here, uh, you know, starting the first of September, and we we mentioned this, these are trades that we're looking at probably four to six weeks. So we're getting out there around four or five weeks. And we, and we do have some nice profits. I hope, hopefully you bought some of these. And it's time that, you know, maybe you take a little bit off. If we, get, if we come back down here to a, the support levels and, and some of the moving averages, that's time when you can, you know, maybe, maybe you go back into it with a little bit less money. Uh, but, you know, you don't sell it all out uh, all one time. You, you let, let the you know, trend is your friend, and you try to keep some money exposed to those trends going here. So this is coming back up here with the oil today, where it's up another 2%. Uh, trading around 51, uh, well, it's right at 51 right now. It's up two and, two and three quarters percent. So uh, you're, you're retraced all of this from yesterday, and again, I think you'll see that 52 dollars. So you can probably get a little bit. Uh, uh, what individual security risk? Um, um, Jack, I'm trying to read your question, I, I, and I'll get to that uh, with the ETF. Uh, yeah, you, you got it, XAL. You can avoid some individual security. That's that's a good way to play the airlines in here. Uh, XAL uh, is, is a good way. I think you can make some money on that. We'll look at that later. Uh, here is also the energy sector next. You can see here we had this downward channel right over here. Where we started going bullish, and we said we want to be exposed to the oil stocks. And then we had this big breakout. We're having this consolidation in energy right now. Uh, had a little bit of a gap up on this thing this morning. That's uh, you know good accumulation, but look, you're you're, you're really overbought. You know, I, I still think we, we're going to get move higher on XLE, but you can't uh, you know you can't run your head in, head into the wall. And at some point, you, you have to look at this. As, even though you may say, okay, oil's going to fifty five dollars, maybe by December. Well, okay, well, we got the fifty two fifty in uh, the first of October. I'm I'm pretty happy with with, with my profit. I'm going to sell some of that, and I'll, I'll I can buy some back. Same, this energy's telling you right now that. Okay, we're, we're consolidating this group. We're going back and forth in this little little section. You know, it may come all the way back down here, but I, I think we may get one more leg up on energy uh, here over the next couple of weeks. But if I have some nice profits in some of these stocks, and you should have, um, nothing wrong with peeling back, back. If it turns around and breaks over here and gets even more overbought, hey, that's when it, when it gets that overbought, the the, the, the chances that you're, you're probably going to end up giving back some of that money before you... Uh, before, before you get out of it, and then that, and I'd rather uh, you know, selling the strength is, a, is something that you want to try to do. And if you if you've got in under these, uh, you know, here's September 1st. We're talking about buying oil. You've got to move from here to here. That's strength, and so you're so you're taking some profits in that. And then we and we'll watch this thing over here. Right, and when we, when we get back in here, we start to see another, you know, leg up. Then we'll be ready for it, and we'll we'll, we'll try to get you back in there. Okay, this is some of the other sectors that we talked about uh, recently. That we, we we talked about that you wanted to be in. We talked about uh, the the technology sector and pulled back in here. We were getting a fresh leg up. It still has some room to go to the upside. You know, if we, could, we talk about that uh, upward channel, you know, we had a big throw over here and then it corrected to the downside. It was so big, and we had a little bit over here. We brought back down here, stay within this channel here, 
Uh, I think you can have a little bit more on the upside with some of your tech stocks. Um, so it's getting close to where we want to maybe consider taking a profit. This is a pretty, this is strength in here. We want to sell into strength, but I think we're, you know, we're not quite overbought all the way yet. We just started hitting this 95, 96 area on XLK. Uh, if you have some individual stocks that are, you know, pumping in here, you know, I, I, I haven't looked at the chart with Nvidia today, but there's, but there's some of these stocks that have really are, are, have really had a big move. Uh, perhaps it may be time to sell part of a position and sell in the strength um, you know, as things get a little bit frothy. But the technology still looks fine in here. Okay, we've talked about back over here. We said we want to buy the banks. All right, once again, we're overbought. This, this is the strength. This is what we want to sell into. We're consolidating some of these gains. You also see the 10-year Treasury yield. Uh, we got up the other day to about 2.3. I think it might have hit 2.39. Uh, that was probably right over here last Thursday. Things were getting a little bit frothy. Dynamite. Um, we're overbought on this 14-day over here. It's, it stayed overbought for a little bit, but accumulation is still there. We're above 95 on the 30-day stochastic. Um, you, you may sell a little bit of a uh, position on some of these banks that have had a spike up, but you're looking that you want to stay in these long term at this stage. You know, we're not, we're not. That's not it. These things have a little ways to go, and as we start talking about tax reform, you know, but if this thing, this thing goes like this and then starts going up. You know, you'll be you'll be glad we took a little bit of profit. If it keeps going like that, we still locked in some money, and you know, and we can still make some more money. And you know, the main thing with with, with if you can take anything out of it, what you learned today, it's holding on to what you have. And so we're going to, you know, this is, the market all of a sudden happens tomorrow and it goes boom. You, you look at back and go, boy, I had all these profits over the last couple of weeks. I didn't have to take anything. You, so it's nothing wrong with doing that. I don't suggest you ever sell everything uh, at one time. But in this case, um, it may be time just to, to back off a little bit on the financials. I want, You don't have to because um, they're, they're not quite as oversold as some of the other groups. But maybe you do, and you see if this thing, uh, you know, just to see if we what what happens. If we get a little bit frothy, maybe we have a little bit more of a pullback than you think. So we've talked about the materials. Uh, again, here's what we're overbought. Uh, a little bit of negative divergence here in the MACD. You're up here above 95 on your 30-day stochastic. You've had a hell of a move in here, and now we're consolidating some of these gains. Um, if you've got, if you've have some trades in copper, some of these copper stocks we talked about, and, and some of these other material stocks. Uh, again, maybe you think about taking a little bit of money off, selling into this strength, and again, not the whole position. Uh, I think we can still go higher, but this is another group that um, you know we, we should be in it. We talked about uh, you know, especially with the financials last week, talked about American Express and Morgan Stanley and um, you know at State Street, First PNC, USB. A lot of those have some great profits. You scale back a little bit, but as we talked a little, also. We're not out of that trade yet. I think that, that trade, this trade goes on for a few more weeks. Okay, here we have uh, industrials. Again, we're getting a consolidation. This one is overbought. You give your, your uh, you know, now you're getting some negative divergence in the uh, MACD histogram. If, you, if you're in here on this thing, on some of these, and the reason the XLI is up, what we talked about uh, the last, you know, the last month, is the, the industrials, the big industrials and multinationals are up there because you've had such a pullback in the, uh, in the in the dollar, and that allows you to uh, you know that, that, that cuts out the currency uh, conversion when they bring back their profits from overseas. In addition, a lot of those companies, if they get this uh, if they get this uh, allowing to, to bring back a lot of their funds from overseas, it's going to be a big boost to what they can do. They can use that money for uh, share buybacks. They can uh, you know maybe up their dividends. A lot of good things they can do in some of these uh, big in industrials. Uh, that are all, that are also participating in the global economic uh, recovery. So uh, a lot of good, a lot of good. This this is not over just because we're consolidating. However, if you've if you've been in here and you own some stuff that you bought at 80 and there's 95, you, you have nothing wrong with taking a little bit of money off the table and seeing if we get a little bit of a pullback and we can go in and and pick them up on something else. Um, another one over here we've been talking about here's uh, the biotech. Uh, okay, here's their its channel. And we're up here at the top of that. We're getting a little bit of sideways action in that. A little bit more negative divergence in the biotechs, but they're still under accumulation. I still think this is where you want to go. But I would I would think that with the biotechs we get a little bit of a, you know a little bit of a uh, maybe come back down here a little bit to, with some with some selling because they uh, you know it, it may be getting a little bit overbought uh, 
uh, well, it was over the bottom here. Now we're starting to maybe a little work its way up on that. Okay, again, like I told you, I, I'm sorry I had the flu. I didn't get a chance to really do a lot of planning, but I think we, I, hopefully we can get something out of the, uh, you know, about when, when you take a profit on some of these things that we talk about. And today would be a good example where, uh, especially on this morning's pop where you, and if we uh, end up late, hired later on this afternoon, you could think about some, some areas, that, and maybe think about some prices that, well, I got a good uh, profit on that. I'm going to lock that in. But the, the NYSE is almost uh, two to one on the advanced decline line, so it's going to still be fairly uh, solid at the end of the day. NASDAQ, we're about 50 50 on it right now as far as advancing volume and declining volume. So um, it may just trend a little bit sideways, but I think that the NASDAQ over the last couple of days has consolidated a little bit more. You may, I still think you're going to have another push on that. So go ahead and start putting some questions in on that. I have a little bit going on right now. And, uh, boy, Chuck talked about Europe. Okay, Chuck, I did do uh, uh, did look at Europe. And right now, uh, you know, we talk about these portfolio things that we have, and we're going to actually have a little talk on some of those. Uh, all right, we ended up buying Germany on Monday. The, the, the symbol on that is EWG. Um, we came in there right around that, in that portfolio. We're holding... Uh, Austria, Canada, uh, Italy, France, and Germany. And I think those, those are the five uh, European uh, markets that I feel are the strongest at, at this stage as far as relative strength goes. That's what we're holding in that portfolio. That portfolio is up about 18% year to date uh, with uh, buying the, just buying the ETFs, which I recommend rather than buying the uh, individual companies. You might you, 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 can, you might make a little bit more on some of the individual companies where you, you get a home run if you bought something like a, uh, you know, a Volkswagen or something like that. Where, but I think your, your risk profile can come down a little bit if you, uh, you, know, if you buy the ETFs and you buy a, a basket of them. And I, I keep five in the emerging markets and I keep five in the uh, 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 developed world. In the emerging markets, what we're holding in that, uh, in, in that portfolio, we have GXC, uh, which is, I, I believe, it's a, f a financial uh, uh, um, ET, global ETF for financials. ECH, which is Chile, ILF, which is a Latin America fund. We have we've had Brazil in there for quite a while. EWZ. There's one AAXJ, which is uh, uh, Asia minus Japan, uh, which has done well too. I know China is starting to, to pick up too, but uh, those are the ones that I'm holding right now in the emerging market. Uh, and I'll, I'll, for now, going forward, I'm going to let you know until we get these things rolling out, our additions and subtractions in, in these portfolios uh, going forward. Okay, here's another one. We have a question. Thoughts on LAWS? Okay, I'm going to go ahead and turn this over uh, and share my screen so we can start pulling up some charts. I hope you'll, uh, you know, if you have questions, put them up there right now so that we can uh, get to as many as we can. So hold on here while I uh, reduce this and we... Share the uh, chart package. Okay, LAWS. Let's see here. Can you see the chart, Will? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, okay, Lawson Products. Um, I'm curious, is, is this the uh, Lawson company that used to be up in Ohio and uh, in the Midwest, they used to have, sell the chip chop ham and uh, dairy products and all like that. Uh, you, you have to like this this chart. It's, it's doing well. The accumulation looks great. Uh, you, you're above that 80 level. You've had a little bit of a pullback, so you're you know below 95 on a 30-day stochastic, which is good. Uh, you're punching out uh, new highs. Uh, you're not overbought. Uh, if, you, if you take the 50-day retracement on this to this. You, uh, you're obviously past your 50% rate. I think this probably goes up and retests its old high after the $27.80, $28 range. Uh, so it, it looks fine. I think you're, uh, you can work out, providing that's, that's the loss in products, the, the grocery store that's in that area. Let me uh, see if Linda has something to say on that. That's the same thing. No, okay. Seller by JPM before earnings. Okay, let's take a look at this. A, a lot of times... Uh, you know, one of the things you want to look at on a, on a stock like J.P. Morgan is you'll, you'll get a hint, especially on the accumulation uh, AD line. Uh, you know, I, 
I, I think the banks long term still have a long ways to go. Look at this AC line. This is just starting to really go. You've had a lot of people got got tired of waiting for the banks for the for the uh, ten year Treasury to, to go up. This is why you were having some selling in there. The, the banks are still under own, believe it or not, even after this. Uh, that's diamond. Hold on. Here we go. Okay. Uh, that's probably going to change <laughs> what I'm talking about. No, you see, the banks are still under own. They they uh, have had a hell of a run. You had this breakout in here. But over the next, uh, you know, the, the, the bank, this financial uh, uh, thing, we, you know, we talked about buying some of the oversold insurance companies. That That's worked out really well here the last couple of weeks. The banks still look good to me. The, the bigger banks still look fine. They're going to have some, some strong earnings. Now, you always have a risk going into, into earnings because – not so much. I mean, you know, J.P. Morgan is going to have a great quarter. However, you know, it, it depends on their forecast, and, and your your risk on this, I would think, would be will the hurricanes slow down the uh, uh, you know the loans? I, I I don't know. You know, some people may may say, well, a lot of people are going to have to get loans to to fix things up because they're going to need new cars, they're going to need stuff. But is the insurance company going to pay for it? What, what, how much is going to happen? And that, just like they say right now, maybe the uh, you know our gro economic growth is around three percent, but the uh, hurricanes may knock that down to two percent. Nothing that's going to stall it long term, but that's your that's going to be your risk on this. This thing's had a great move. It's uh, you know it's up you know twenty five percent. Longer term, I think you're fine on that. And I think if you get a uh, uh, you, 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 you know you sell in the strength. If you've had this thing and you may, maybe you put a sell in here, maybe I, if I can get out ninety eight before earnings. Uh, maybe I take a little bit of money off the table. Then, if it would gap down, you buy the gap down, and and uh, and you're back into it for the long term hold. I'm not uh, saying that's definitely what you do. However, like I said, I still think you you've got a long way on some of these uh, banking stocks, the Citigroup, Bank of America. Over the uh, these are these are stocks. I think at this stage you want to own, uh, have exposure to those uh, going forward. Uh, you know, maybe maybe like a year or two, uh, much longer than just this. Okay, we're getting a lot of stuff in here now. Okay, seller. Okay, Lawson profile. Lawson distributes the service to the industrial. Okay, that's the wrong Lawson company. I, we had a Lawson company in Ohio when I was growing up that we'd go and buy chip chop ham and stuff. I thought that was kind of a uh, uh, interesting. This is uh, so the industrial commercial institution of government managed repair and operations marketplace. Uh, so whatever they do, when you just look at the chart, it, 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 it's going higher. I think you can still trade that thing in the uh, 24 to 28. That's why a lot of the times you look at charts, you, you don't care what, what the company does. If it's in a good sector, if it's in a, uh, uh, you know, the services industry is good right now, uh, you can tell by the chart whether it's going higher or lower. Here's some notes here. Okay, that's not in there. Got time for a couple more questions if you, if you want to ask about a couple more stocks. Okay, I'll go ahead and wrap it up then. Uh, you know, again, if this is your first time, I hope you got something out of this. I appreciate you taking time out of your busy day to join me uh, in this. I know you got a lot of things to do. I hopefully, it, uh, we, we made you a little bit of money and we give you a little bit of uh, an idea of what to do once you have a stock that's that's, that's, that's taking off, is breaking out, and how to protect some of those profits. Uh, next week, we'll also talk about uh, if you don't if you don't sell anything, you get a breakout. Maybe we can talk a little bit about, uh, okay, I've got a stock in here that I, I do like for another year. And I don't really want to sell any, you know, what we can do. But anyway, enjoy the week. And, uh, again, uh, we're overbought. We're, I'm looking sideways to maybe uh, down a little bit. Um, but the longer-term trend is still up, and I think we can uh, ride this uh, ride this bull a little bit longer. All right, thanks for joining me.